because I'm about to upset a lot of Southern people, especially in the great state of Tennessee. Um, so, you know, I'm ready for your comments in the comment section. Oh, well. So here recently, I just got back from my trip to Tennessee. I went down to the Pigeon Ford Gatlingburg area, and uh, I've never been there before. Uh, the place that we stayed at was re very, very nice. I never knew existed in my whole entire life, and I enjoyed myself staying at the cabin up into the mountains. And I didn't see any bears, so that's good. My 357 didn't get a workout. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of things uh, that I just don't like to do in life, and that's like to go do touristy stuff. Um, and I'm going to save people the trip, and if it hurts their economy, I don't give a shit. Uh, but Pigeon Forge in Gatlingburg is just like Branson, Missouri. And I went down to Branson last year. I didn't quite like that. It was way too hilly over in Branson. Everything's on a hill uh, in, in that place. Uh, this place a little bit, a little bit kind of the same, kind of different in certain aspects. But it's the same stuff you go down and, and do. I mean, uh, the food that we have wasn't great. Uh, and it, I don't think it was authentic authentic southern cooking by any means uh, of the imagination uh but it was just too touristy i mean I'm, I'm not into that kind of stuff and i'm not spending hundreds of dollars at a little trinket shop you know i'm just not doing that i can't afford to, to do it anyway and i wouldn't do it even if i had the money um but that's just me uh, so we devised this plan while we were down there to go dove hunting um, I researched dove hunting uh, in Tennessee, and it looks pretty favorable. Up here in the north, we don't get a ton of stuff that other people get in the south, uh, hunting-wise. Um, the dove population, it just specifically in my area, is low in certain areas and high in others, uh, but usually that's because it's the cities, things like that. Um, but you can do pretty good in the spots that we go to up here on our public land. And I'll get to public land in a minute. So we figured we'd go down there because they have this evasive species of dove that has a collar around its neck. It doesn't quite, it doesn't look like a morning dove. It almost looks like a small pigeon. Uh, so, and they're unlimited, but you can only possess a certain amount, but they're unlimited to shoot. You can shoot as many as you want uh, uh, during the season. So uh, we were like, man, that would be good. Throw it on the grill, throw it on a jalapeno, things like that. You know, just, you know, little uh, reminder out there. That's what you can do with some of this stuff. And again, they're bigger than a morning dove. Uh, so the breast on, on the dove, on this kind of dove is going to be big. And, you know, we can probably put on a full jalapeno, cream cheese it up, wrap a piece of bacon around it, and throw it on the grill. That was the whole intention. Well, that never happened. Uh, it was never going to happen, and I'll explain why. So, uh, it, it was cool because it was only a 30-minute drive. This was Forks of the River uh, Nature uh, Place. Uh, that's what it was called, Forks of the River. It's right on Old Dick Road or something like that, uh, or Old Dick Lane or something like that, and it winds up in the mountains. Be careful going on these roads because only one car could fit. Uh, I, I, I shit you not, and the fall off the edges, you don't want to be a part of. Uh, so we get back into this place, and it kind of looked promising at first, and the picture showed big sunflowers. I think they took their picture right on top of the sunflower, because the sunflowers that we experienced were about as big as this, tu big as this Tula box. Um, so... I mean, they weren't very big, and they didn't look like anything in the pictures unless this was weeks prior, um, uh, which pro probably was. Um, but when we got there, everything was dead. Every single sunflower was dead. There were little to no seeds on them. Um, the Basically, the place was shot out. Uh, and it is just a disappointment uh, because I was really hoping uh, to get a couple of these these suckers. Uh, and, and, you know, take a couple back with me and, you know, experience it with the folks up here, maybe create a new hunter. Uh, but that w it was never to be as uh, soon as we hit the fields. And um, while we were going there, 
um, you know, you got to get up on this little ridge to get to these fields. Uh, we know there's shotgun shells on the ground, and this is where public land comes in. Look, folks, uh, I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been hunting. I don't, I don't care about your experience at this point. But when you start trashing stuff, the government tends to want to step in. Uh, we've seen the government step in. I don't know how many times in our in our lives where then they start to regulate stuff, and then it sucks, and then it's you know sometimes it goes away, sometimes you can't do it. Uh, so we have to be very cautious as hunters to not let so much encroachment from government. And that becomes the responsibility of the hunter and taking care of your public lands. I will say this for this, just this area. Now, I'm not saying about your area, if you're west of it or east of it or really south in, into Tennessee, because uh, this is the northern portion I'm talking about. But this specific area was an absolute dump. It was. It was a dump. Not only was it filled, and I'll roll pictures in here, not only was it filled with just empty shotgun shells everywhere, piles upon piles upon piles. I saw cans, bottles, you, you name it, uh, packages uh, of food that people were eating and just threw it on the ground. And I'm going to tell you, man, that's if that's the way you guys do it down there, that's the way you do it. But up here, if you start doing that, uh, you're going to get slapped with an unfortunate hefty fine. Look, I could, I could sit here and tell you about road pirates every day and how, and how uncon unconstitutional it is. But it only gets that way when we let it get that way. And I think, I think that goes for our gun rights and everything else that long, runs along that line. When you start just trashing areas, you, the government will take over those areas and, and they'll try and make uh, whatever they can off it or develop it into another stupid subdivision with a roundabout. Uh, so that, that's on you guys down there. I don't know if this is the, if you guys go out there after the season and pick up shells, but you guys are going to be out there until, I don't know, next October from what I seen, because we were picking up some shells at, at a point, uh, but I can't heavy down my vest, dude, with a bunch of empty shotgun shells that I never shot because of irresponsible hunters. And I think that's the, one of the most disappointing. I mean, the hell with shooting birds when I can't even walk and I'm slipping and, you know, trying to put a shot on a bird, man, and I'm stepping in a pile full of shells and slipping and sliding. That's dangerous, dangerous, especially if you got it, if you have a gun in your hand and you fall. That's, that's treacherous. Up here, we take care of our public lands and, and we, and we, as hunters and with the people that I hunt with, we take care of it, man. We see it, a shotgun shell on the ground, we pick it up. If we see a piece of trash, we pick it up. You know, throw it in the back of our vest. But dude, there's no way I could pick up shotgun shells here. There's no way I could pick up trash. And, it, and it's embarrassing. And I'll never hunt that area again uh, in my entire life. I'll probably never visit that area. I'll probably drive through it, but I'll never visit there. And I'll never uh, pump money into that economy there. I just don't. I mean, I don't know what your DNR is doing with their resources, but boy, uh, so one of you, uh, one of you good old boys down there, better invent a shell picker upper and then sell it to that to the DNR for trillions of dollars uh, because they're going to need it, and you're going to be rich, and then you can buy your own land, and you never have to worry about that spot ever again. You know, uh, thinking there, or maybe I should. Don't take my idea, but I mean that's embarrassing and it, it's it's shameful. I mean, plastic, if you haven't noticed, it doesn't quite, doesn't, we're not shooting, you know, paper shotgun shells. I mean, there's somebody down in the comments right now. I shoot paper shells. Good for you. But th this is not paper shells. This is plastic and plastic doesn't go away for a very, very, very long time. If you, if you were uh, such a fuddish person, you would probably be in heaven. If you were a reloader of shotgun shells, you high brass, low brass, Lead shot, steel shot, you, it doesn't matter what it was, man. There's tons to choose from, very fresh, some still glistening. Uh, so, I mean, for, you know, like when you shoot a deer and you track it with a blood track, we tracked these two gentlemen who had, uh, they were shooting, I think it was Orange Monarchs and uh, I think it was Winchester X 20 gauge loads. And we followed their whole path. Mine as well, I mean, there's no birds here. Maybe these guys know a, a thing or two, and we'll just because they're just plopping their shells out of their gun, boom, or they're just not picking them up. They have a semi-auto, and they're just shooting at birds. 
So we figured to follow them. I mean, they're shooting a lot. I don't know what they're shooting at because there's no birds here. Uh, we literally walked those th fields for three days, whether it was in the morning or the evening. Didn't matter. And there was little to no birds. I got to see one of these, these pigeons I talked about in the beginning of the video before. And yes, dude, they are quite big. They're way bigger than anything up here. Uh, I'm not saying crow size, but I'm saying, yeah, like a small pigeon, like this dove, I should say. Small pigeon, man. And it would have been exciting to shoot them. But I watched guys shoot them and miss them. And I think these, that's another thing about this spot, that these birds are really educated. Really educated. I shot at a crow, which I... I could probably hit him, but he ducked my shot. I mean, he knew what was coming when he flew over that field. There was no, there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We watched a flock of squab totally avoid it. They look, they look good, man. It was a good flock of squab, but they totally avoided this place and went around it. I mean, this place was shot up. I mean, not very many animals there. I mean, I did chuck a deer out of there uh, looking for a dove that we thought we might have shot. Uh, but I mean, I didn't know if it was a bear or a deer and it ended up being a deer and cause I was covered this high tall in, 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 in tall, nasty brush briars. I mean, just not well maintained. And, uh, uh, I'm telling you, we, we didn't recover that dove. I'll tell you that. I mean, I don't know if, if my buddy hit it or not. He said he did it and it kind of went down, uh, into this pile. But dude, when, when you don't have rows, uh, that becomes a problem. That becomes a problem. You can't get in there unless you have a dog. Not everybody has a dog, people. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody has a dog to go retrieve. Sometimes you got to get up off that bucket and go. And that's another thing. Is there a shortage on buckets in this area? Like you can't, if, are, what are you sitting? Are you just standing? What are you doing at this point? Because if you had a bucket with you, you should have took your shotgun shells and threw it in your bucket and then dumped it at the trash at the end of the trail. I mean, this isn't rocket science, folks, but I will tell you, if our public lands look like that on any occasion, I will tell you right now, they would shut that down and boy, nobody would hunt that for a while because the government would control it and they continue to control it and they would continue to put push hunters out of it. You know, I mean, that's what government does. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you work for government. That's what government does. I and mean, we've seen it. So as, you know, me uh, trying to help new hunters, younger hunters, pick up your stuff, pick up your garbage. Don't leave it there. Nobody wants to see it. And I definitely didn't want to see it. And it's embarrassing uh, to if you live in that area, just that area. I don't, again, I'm not trying to pick on the whole state, but that area, I'll never hunt it. I'll never go down there and I'll never give money to their economy. It's just that I'll never buy another uh, 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 another tag in the state of Tennessee, unless somebody really puts me on to some decent hunting, uh, regardless. I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to bag everything that I see, like what well, probably happened in this field, considering how many shells there were. But again, hunting's a way of life down there. I, I totally get it. I understand it. Um, it's few and far between where I'm from up here in the North. But again, if you don't take care of these lands, if you don't, cure them up man these birds aren't gonna what you think a bird's gonna want to live in a pile of shot, shotgun shells no nah, they're gonna take off and go down to pigeon forge gatling bird or stay in those mountains that's where they're gonna be forever and then you're gonna be instead of just sitting in a sunflower field you'll be hiking these big old mountains i'll roll one a picture in here you'll be hiking these big old mountains trying to shoot a bird i mean or they'll just stay in the towns and there's nothing you can do at that point uh so that was my trip down to Tennessee. I didn't even take any videos. There's nothing to take a video. Here's a picture of me holding a squirrel. That's the only thing I shot down there. And that was a run of the mill. It was all the way in the back of this field off, off this little trail. Uh, and uh, that's it. It was a good sized squirrel. It's going to be a good eater. But I mean, again, that, that field was shot out for birds and there wasn't much wildlife. I chased a deer out of there, a small six. I mean, if you shot this guy probably down there, they would, even this guy up here, this is, that's a young deer. You shot that down there, they probably think it was a, a giant because the deer that I seen just driving around weren't very big either. I mean, it, it is what it is, but I mean, no wonder I didn't see but one deer there because it's just, it's grotesque. And this deer took off and, and went the other way and didn't go to the forest. So what does that tell you? Uh, when you see birds avoiding the area heavily and other animals not wanting to be in that, be in those areas, it's probably not great.
<laughs> to, to say the least. But again, dude, I'm not picking on the whole state of Tennessee, your specific area, just the Forks of the River area, the, this wildlife uh, a joint that they got going there. You guys going to have to do something uh, because for me, uh, being an out-of-state hunter, again, that's pretty embarrassing. If you came up here and I took you to Kingsbury or something like that, you'd be like, well, this is pretty pretty well maintained for the most part. I mean, there's still could there's always room for improvement, folks. Trust me, whether you whether you're trying to shoot animals or be cleanliness, I mean, for your area. I mean, come on. Uh, this again, this isn't rocket science, but it was probably one of the, the worst hunting experiences uh, that I ever had. And trust me, I've eaten tag soup. So I've eaten tons of deer tags. So you don't have to tell me about disappointment, but going down there and, and thinking, you know, even if there's not a ton of birds to shoot, just to see these things and they're just non-existent. And again, the next possible place was like, an hour almost two hours away and that's four hours both you know going there and coming back and dude i'm not traveling four hours for that i mean from what i seen in this area i might as well have just walk the fields here at this point uh so it was a real letdown uh but again i'll try and hunt out of state in the future but not right now i'll focus on my state and my public lands for now and some people will say good stay there I have I have no problem in doing that, especially uh, if I if all your fields look like that. So be it. Don't come to Indiana and act that way, because I guarantee you, unfortunately, the DNR walks around with a magnet. Uh, so don't be shooting lead loads over there on, on the federal grounds. Uh, you're going to get a hefty fine and ticket. Again, I don't I hate it when they do that, but it is what it is. That's why I'm not slipping and sliding, and my fields aren't really shot out to that capacity. It is what it is. I'd like to thank my old and my new subscribers, just the people uh, that zip through. Uh, before I leave you, uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Go Vols, dude. They beat, um, who was it, uh, Alabama, Oklahoma, or somebody there, and they got really excited. And, I, and again, I don't care, but congratulations, like always. We'll catch you on the next one.